hey guys what's up so welcome to video number four in our react series so in this one we want to go from react to the api using axios so we'll be setting up an axios instance configuration together with environment variables so we can save our backend url our backend base url in our environment variables and then connect to the backend using axios so if you go back to our application if you go to our folder structure we created a folder called helpers so in here we can have the first helper that will be the axios the one responsible set up axios so i'm going to have axios.js here so now here we basically need to install axios actually at first so here we can do npm install axios so as it installs we can now import axios from axios to import axios from axios and normally you would come in here and do axios.get post patch whatever you want to do and it will work fine but that will mean that you have to specify the full path to the api in every request that you make so what you're gonna do here is actually set up a configuration that enables us to not specify that base url on every request so we can easily change it if we might if we move our backend to another host so here i'm going to now set up an axios instance i'm gonna do a const axios instance so this is going to be equal to axios dot create so this enables us to create an instance so we, we can define a configuration so the first thing we are going to need to do is specify the things that repeat so the first thing that repeats of course will be the base url for our backend so now we can do base url and then we'll set it to base url so for now we'll set it to base url so i will create that so we also have some headers that we'll be repeating. For example, when we have a user authenticated, we want to be sending that token to the server. So we can also have headers. So actually we can keep this. So let's define this up here. So we can do base const base URL. So this is gonna be equal to our base URL. So also we are gonna have some headers. So with the headers, I'm actually going to use a late because we want to do some checks before we actually add a token to the headers. So now we can do headers, it's gonna be an empty object by default. So we want to check if we actually have a token in local storage. So if local storage token, then we want to add it. So with JWT, like we set on the backend here, where is it? Yeah. So here, when you have a route that's, all, that's protected like this, we have to pass a JWT token. So we need to pass it here. And the format should be bearer in the token so to do that in axios we will be defining this header this authorization header so now we can do he header oh actually i need to change this to headers so headers dot authorization so this is going to be equal to like i mentioned here on the back end you have to pass bearer than this so depending on how your back end author authentication is set up you have to do it that way but ours we need to set up bearer and then the token so we can do bearer bearer and then the token so here we can actually leave a space and concatenate there the token which you can get from local storage the token and we can actually use string literals here so we can have uh, this remove this have that so we keep what's dynamic like this and that's gonna do the same thing so make sure you have one space there so this whenever we have a token it will be adding it so if you have other headers we need to send across all requests we can define them here okay so once we have this of course we need to export the axios instance so export axios instance as default so we can do export default axios instance so now the way this will work is whenever we call axios instance dot whatever method we call it's going to call it with this defined already. So before we actually complete up with this, I want to set up the base URL. So if you go to our application documentation, the guys made this one very well. So they are telling us that the base URL is at slash what slash API. So we are gonna copy this. That is the base URL. So like I mentioned, we are going to be working with the environment variables. So here we are gonna actually create a dot .env file so we can have a dot .env 
So it's gonna actually be outside the root, this outside the source. So in the root, I'm gonna create a dot env. So in here, we can define our application base URL, our backend base URL. So normally, you would do backend URL equals then the value. But now we want to do that with the protocol, so we need to have this one too. And then here in Axios, right here, we can get this by using the process module. So here we can do process dot env dot the name of the file of dot the name of the of the variable. So we can do dot this. Okay, so doing this actually will not work. So create React app actually expects you to do it in a specific way. So the way they expect they expect you to do it is by you need to specify react underscore app underscore the name of your variable. So if you don't do it like this, it won't work. So make sure you specify like this. That's how create react app dictates. And then make sure you're getting it like that. Okay, so once we have this, now you can see we are picking it from the environment and then sending it to access. So here we can actually run uh, do a console log to see if we get it. So console.log. So we'll be getting the base URL, so base URL, and then the value is gonna be this. So here I can put a comma, then the value. Okay, so to test this, basically we are, remember we, we created a context folder and we have actions. So here I'm actually going to create a new file in actions. So I'm gonna call it this one, register.js for now. So this is gonna be used to test. So here we can now use the Axios instance to test it actually. We can use it, so we can do Axios instance, delete import, it actually imports. Oh, I don't like the way it's importing here, so we need to import it, not using ESM modules. So import Axios instance from. So here let's set up a function, we can actually do export const register. So this is gonna be a function and it's gonna be making a request just to test what we just did. So you can use Axios instance, then we can call get on it. Actually, we're gonna use post because it's gonna be a post request. So when once you call post, you see we pass a URL. So normally, like we set up here, we have configured the base URL already. So here you can do slash auth slash register. And this is on our actually our API, I believe. Yeah, so slash auth slash register. Okay, so we can do it with then here. Let's have a raise, then this console log, raise dot data, raise dot data. So we are actually, we're actually going to be getting errors. For, so for us to get errors, we need to catch them there. So we need to have a catch since we are not sending anything. So we're gonna have a dot catch. So let's have error. Let's actually log the error. Okay, so for now this should do this should do. So I'm gonna have error here. So let's call this function somewhere. No, so in our register, which would be containers register. So for us now to test it, we are gonna use the use effect. Use effect. So this we are gonna use the use effect hook to make. So this is where we are gonna be making the API call, and I'll come back to use effect in a minute. So basically, what I want to do is call in the function. So that will be get. Actually, that will be register. Okay, takes in nothing. So here, let's import use effect from React. Okay, so if you're not familiar with what with use effect, basically it it allows you to, to define what you want to do in here. And then everything you define in here, which we call the function body, will run only when what you put in the dependencies change. So when you don't put anything in the dependencies, it's going to run once when your component renders and never again in the life cycle of a component. So this means it's gonna run once when we render this component. Okay, so now let's run the application. So we run yarn start or we run npm start. I believe we even have it working. So if we come back to the application here, and reload it. 
you can see that we are on the register route, meaning we should have sent an API call. So if we go back to, if we open up the dev console, oh, so I'm gonna open up this. You realize that our base URL is undefined. And the reason for that is we need to restart the server for the environment variables to get picked. So I'm gonna come over here and then restart it. Okay, so once it boots up, you can see that we have our base URL coming through, okay, which is good. And we make an API call, but you see it returns a 400. So if we inspect this request actually, so if you go to network and look at this request, you can see that it is actually concatenating there our base URL. So the access instance is actually is actually adding the base URL for us. So good. And there are more things we can actually do here in this configuration. We'll be adding more and more configuration to this. For example, we'll be setting up interceptors. And then I'll show you how to pass different configurations from different components. So it's going to be interesting. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.